Morning everyone. It is uh today is going to be an interesting interesting topic. Um I'm gonna give it a few minutes to let everyone get on because I know I'm I'm a little early. Um but kind of been a little nervous about today and I'll I'll tell you why in just a minute. Um but let's give everyone a minute. <sighs> so today we're going to talk about, <clears throat> we're talking about your heart and the immune system and eating and how inflammation impacts your heart health. Um, let me move this so it looks like, yeah, there we go. Now, we don't normally talk heart health in this group. It's not typically a, a conversation that happens. Um, but it's one that actually should happen. So maybe we'll, we'll create something where each month um, we, we focus on heart health at least once a month. And as you can hear, my voice is not completely back, but um, we're going to deal with that. All right. So this is one of those topics that I need to give a trigger warning about. Um, I have heard a lot of people lately who have lost loved ones because of heart attacks, coronary disease, things like that. Um, I had a call Friday night that a friend of mine passed away on Wednesday from a heart attack. Well, she had a heart attack and then she was in the hospital a couple days and um she's my age, you guys. She's my age. So And the saddest part is that this happens a lot to a lot of women. A lot of women. It's kind of the same problem we have with breast cancer. You know, when you think breast cancer, you think women, right? But there's an equal amount of men who have fight breast cancer with heart attacks. Um, the statistic that American Heart Association gives is one in three women die from some sort of cardiovascular disease or attack. Um, <laughs> so when I scheduled this, I did not know that my friend had had a heart attack. I don't want to close the door case. I'm really crazy. Um, I knew about a few of you who were going through similar situations just with loved ones. So I knew I was going to to give a trigger warning, but um, I didn't realize that would be one that was so close. Um, and, you know, we weren't good friends. We actually, we knew each other in high school. We've known each other almost our whole lives, but we only in the last couple of years have begun talking. And she seemed to be healthy. And that's the biggest, not biggest, that's the scariest thing about our heart is <clears throat> you can look healthy. You can appear healthy. Um, I'm such an ugly crier, you guys. Oh my God, I'm going to have a Rudolph nose all day. Um, you can appear healthy. 
but be fighting so many things that impact your heart. And uh, so I know the American Heart Association a couple of years ago started focusing on getting the word out that women are equally susceptible and that technically we're, we're the more dangerous of the two genders when it comes to heart, heart attacks and strokes <laughs> because we are caregivers. A lot of us are caregivers, caretakers. We just naturally want to take care of other people. So we tend to take care of everybody else, but not take care of ourselves, right? So, you know, you get a little numbness, you get some pains, and you don't, you don't really pay much attention um, until it's too late. And that's part of the reason I wanted to kind of start all this stuff up as soon as I was capable of, of holding clients, of helping clients without feeling like I was overwhelmed because then you feel overwhelmed and that, that helps nobody. Um, because there's a lot of information that people don't give. You know, we have all this information that we learn that is shoved into our heads when we're studying, when we're getting our certifications and the medical classes we have to go through for our degrees. Um, and it sits up there and then you don't talk about it unless you have like a one-on-one -on -one or a group, right? Which I don't understand. So that's part of the reason I wanted to do this is to make sure that information like this is out there. So one of the things that I did was I wrote down the symptoms because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to remember them when I was talking to you. And it's kind of crucial to me in this topic that <laughs> so much for water, waterproof mascara. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure if emotionally I was going to be able to remember this. So, and it's really important because it's not, we're not talking COVID flu colds, like they're, the, the crossover of symptoms. Um, these are very unique. There is absolutely nothing wrong with feeling something, going in, getting checked, just to make sure. There is it. <clears throat> and there's so many of us that don't want to bother, that don't want to be a burden, that don't want to worry somebody else. And when we don't want to worry somebody else and we're worried about somebody else more than us, that's when we're hurt. And that's when our health is impacted. Um, so I'm gonna go over these. I'm gonna, when I do the recording, I wanna put the list up on the screen. Um, just so that it is visual, so that you have it. So when you go to listen to this next week um, off YouTube, it'll be, I'll have the, the text up on the screen. All right, so with a heart attack, your breathing is abnormal. Um, when someone actually has a heart attack and pass, passes out, their breathing is not normal. It's very shallow, um, almost pained. There's a loss of responsiveness, nine times out of 10. Just prior to that, you're gonna feel some uncomfortable pressure in your chest. So it could be tightening, it could be squeezing could feel like, you know, I've heard people say it feels like someone's just squeezing the life out of you and specifically squeezing the life out of your heart. Um, or that there's a balloon in your chest and it's just being blown up. There's some pain and different people say different degrees. You break out in a cold sweat, you're nauseous, you're lightheaded and it happens like that, you know, and you just, weird things happen. I don't care what weird thing happens. If you have a weird thing happen and you're like, mm, this is not right, at least make a phone call. Um, with strokes, you know, a lot of times your face just kind of droops or you start talking, you think you're saying one thing, but it makes no sense to the people around you. And that's not necessarily something that you are gonna identify, but if you're talking to somebody and that's happening, then you need to get help. Um, there's weakness and numbness in the arm. I always thought that was a heart attack signal, 
But in going through and researching, it looks like that's actually a signal of a stroke. Not a signal of a heart attack, but regardless, it's a signal to call for help. All right, so there are your symptoms. So all of this is very scary and uh, and I'm sure you're wondering, okay, so we've got the scary part out of the way. Why are we even still talking? Like, what do we do about it? What does this all mean? I talk about inflammation. My big focus is listening to your body so you can reduce inflammation because inflammation is space for all illness, chronic syndromes, diseases, lifelong things that we're gonna fight, right? Well, <clears throat> in relation to our heart health, autoimmune disorders, there are several that actually directly impact the heart. So the way autoimmune disorders work is your adrenal system is basically on chronic overdrive. And eventually it wears out. It's like a car, a computer, an engine, whatever you would like to say, um, or whatever example you would like to use. If you leave it running co constantly, it's going to have to shut off. It's going to run out of gas. It's going to burn out. Something's going to happen where it just psh, shuts off, right? With autoimmune diseases and dysfunction, what happens is your adrenal system hits the point where your immune system has been in overdrive for so long that now it thinks that your body is the invader, your organs are the invader. So typically the autoimmune disorder that you are, or the autoimmune dysfunction that you are diagnosed with is associated with a certain organ. With the heart, there's at least five. It's myocarditis, pericarditis, whew, this one's a good one, Takayasu arteritis, art, arteritis, there we go, um, rheumatic disease, and then of course, coronary heart disease. Each one of these impacts the heart differently. And if you think about autoimmune dysfunction, one of the more popular and I say popular sarcastically, one of the more popular is Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's directly impacts the thyroid. So what that means with these five that are impacting the heart, your body is attacking the heart. It's causing inflammation in the heart. With pericarditis, it is an inflammation of the sac surrounding the heart. So you have the heart and then you have you know, the, the lining that encases it, right? Holds it all together. Uh, the myocarditis, that's heart muscles. So it's inflammation within the heart muscles, so it's slowing its activity. Because you know when you swell, like when your fingers swell, they don't move as easily, right? Same thing. If a muscle is swollen, it's not going to move as quickly. It's not going to operate as efficiently. Regardless of what it, whether it is a muscle in your arm that you can physically see, what is an organ inside of your body? That's why inflammation is such a core topic to talk about when we're talking about our heart health. When we talk about autoimmune dysfunction and illnesses in relation to the heart, we don't want to just talk about the ones that impact the heart because ultimately, even though your autoimmune condition is not attacking the heart, it is still impacting your heart health. The harder your body has to work, the harder your heart is working, okay? So if you think about the way that our immune system works, it receives a signal saying, hey, we're under attack. Produces adrenaline to give us energy to fight our fight, right? And we're not, I know last week we talked about the four different stages of trauma. We're, we're focusing on fight or flight today, okay? Um, so you send out adrenaline. Well, you put too much adrenaline in a heart, what happens? And when your heart stops, they use adrenaline to start it back up. Well, when your body produces too much adrenaline for too long, now your heart is pumping in overdrive for way longer than it needs to. So you're burning out your system. 
Um, for some of us, this is something that is actually genetic that we need assistance. We really, and you know, in those cases, you really need to pay attention to your diet, to your lifestyle, because those are going to be the things that help your doctors help you. It's going to take your health and put it back into your hands so that while you're managing your heart health and you're managing the impact of the way your body is responding to things on your heart, you're also helping your body to thrive. You know, you're helping your body take a step back and slow down. And this is where some of the unique suggestions are going to come into play. Um, and, and we'll get there. We're going to talk about your diet. We're going to talk about exercise and how to kind of pull this all together so that regardless of what you're dealing with, you can actually use these techniques to help your heart operate effectively and efficiently without overworking itself or going into stagnation and slowly, which swollen muscles, joints can't move as easily. Just that's what I mean by stagnation is if there's inflammation, your body can't, you know, your heart can't pump as efficiently because it's trying to work around this swelling and it doesn't have as much room as it normally does. So, all right. Now, with your heart health, diet definitely affects it, but little known fact and something that really is not talked about as much as it needs to be, which, go figure, right? I think half of holistic health is addressing the things that conventional science doesn't want to talk about. You know, they don't want to talk about the physiological impacts of the way we perceive ourselves, of our self-esteem, whether we're depressed, whether we're happy, you know, our emotional state, our mental health and mental well-being, they haven't wanted to talk about how that directly impacts our health. And it can directly impact your heart as well, um, just like everything else that we have talked about. You know, if you're depressed, if you're struggling to find that happy place and find the joy and find satisfaction within your life, it's going to impact your health physically, mentally, and emotionally. And I mean, they're coming around. They are coming around and we're starting to hear more and more about it, which I love. I think it's absolutely fabulous, but we just haven't had a lot of information out there. So this all goes back to specifically using your diet, using your lifestyle to help your body manage whatever conditions are underlying that you know about or don't know about. Because a lot of times there's a lot of things we don't know about. Um, heart attacks in women, and I don't remember the statistic and I don't want to, I don't want to misspeak this because I don't want it to be more dramatic than it actually is. There is a significant portion of women who have heart attacks and strokes that didn't even realize that there was an issue. They didn't even know. And they only found out because of a heart attack. Um, and it happens more times than, than not. So I think that's the scariest part to me is in our society, there's so many people who don't pay attention to health until it's too late. And I was one of them. I was, and I saw a lot of my family members, you know, fighting different things and losing. And it, it was something that I knew I didn't want to do. I wanted to try and prevent as much as I possibly could. But I also wanted to help spread the word about that. Fast forward, here we are today. So when we're talking mental and emotional health, that all takes a toll. And not understanding that there could be things underlying, you don't actually need to know anything is happening to live a healthier lifestyle, to make better choices in your diet, to understand that the way you perceive yourself when you look in the mirror, the way you perceive your, your life, your family, life in general, you know, the world in general, 
has a physiological impact on your health and well-being. Your environment, whether it's toxic, whether it is something that you cleared out the toxins and maybe you're only dealing with the environmental toxins outside, you know, allergens, things like that. Um, noise pollution. They're putting up frames across the street, so uh, it's going to be an interesting day. <laughs> Lots of hammering. Lots of hammering. So noise pollution. When we look at, you know, our mental and our emotional health, we can use the foods we talked about the other week. We can use our diet to start eating so that we are having healthier thoughts, so that it gives our bodies the micronutrients it needs so that it feels healthier. It feels like it has everything it needs and it feels like it's thriving, like there's an abundance and it's not going to starve. There's no struggle happening. Those two things are very impactful on our heart health. Worry, anxiety, and depression, and stress overall impact our heart. So one of the symptoms and one of the signs that your stress has increased is your heart's pumping, right? Palpitations, breathing, all comes from the heart. And I don't, as I'm saying this, I don't want you to think that all stress is bad. We need a certain amount of stress in our life, but it needs to be we're stressed, we're good. We're stressed, we're good. High intensity interval training for your heart. Stress, good. Stress, good. Stress, good. Got it? <laughs> when you're balanced, what that means is your body has sufficient nutrients, and I'm gonna say this every freaking time I can, has sufficient nutrients that has the things that it needs to support whatever is happening underneath your skin that you can't see, so that your body is functioning well, right? And well means physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Body, mind, spirit, all three. Now, I'm talking about food, I'm talking about, you know, exercise and healthy lifestyle. So how does all of this help you heal? How does it help you prevent heart disease from progressing where it is and perhaps heal it from wherever you are in this day and time. Well, an anti-inflammatory diet, which the funny thing about saying anti-inflammatory diet is this. An anti-inflammatory diet effectively just means you're eating foods that aren't crap. What is crap? Caffeine refined sugar or refined ingredients yeah refined sugar is what a lot of people say but refined ingredients artificial ingredients and processed foods you cut those four things out of your diet in your gut now before you come at me and say but you drink coffee all the time that's caffeinated you drink bean tea, green tea it's caffeinated when we talk caffeine, we are talking an abundance. You should only have 24 ounces of regular coffee. That is two shots of espresso. I would love to say it's four shots, but it really isn't. My, my coffee lover brain part wants me to say four shots, but it's not, it's, it's two. So two shots of espresso, two cups of green tea, or black tea, whatever, white tea, any of the, the tea leaves that actually have caffeine within them because there's actually a few that don't. A lot of the herbal to sands, there's no caffeine in those. Um, coffee, 24 ounces of coffee, you guys. Anything over that, you're actually taxing your body and you're making your heart work harder than it needs to. Brian orders these drinks from Starbucks that I swear my heart feels the caffeine. It feels the over stimulation and it freaks me out. I, I get it shouldn't, but oh my God, when I'm standing in line and I hear a stranger ordering a venti drink and adding shots to it, freaks me out, freaks me out. Yeah, sorry, Ramen. 
Yeah. Unless, you know, I mean, if you have a 48 ounce thing of coffee, then, you know, you still have the 24 ounces. So you're actually all right. Um, here's, here's something to think about. If you are drinking more than that, I, I have times, I mean, especially over the last year and a half with the boys. I mean, my God, there have been some days where all I drank was coffee, right? All I drank was coffee. Now I know ice cold water with peppermint in it actually will give you a little bit more energy than a cup of coffee if you drink too much. But, you know, when you're in the moment and you're exhausted and you don't want to think about that, what's the first thing you grab? Your typical caffeine source, right? And, you know, temporarily, it's not a deal. It's like anything else. If you go over with a piece of chocolate cake, like let's say instead of the, the chocolate cake and just having a slice, you eat the whole thing. Well, if you don't eat the whole thing every single week, what's the big deal? It's not a big deal. You're probably going to feel really sick because, um, you know, that's a lot for your stomach. But beyond that, it's not something you do on a consistent basis, so your body will take care of it. So if you have an excess amount of caffeine in any given day, as long as it's not something that is a long-term habit, you're fine. Like you guys have heard me say, you know, I'm trying to, especially recently, I'm trying to cut back from three cups to two, right? Funny story, um, I say that out loud to somebody and then all of a sudden within a week and a half now I'm barely finishing my second cup. It is a good problem to have, trust me. Yes, exactly, you need food for energy. So you can use your food to help fuel you. Anti-inflammatory foods are plant-based. There's there's a lot of people who will tell you that, you know, like red meat is inflammation, um, animal proteins are inflammation. And to, If you eat everything in minimal doses, so you're not eating animal products five times a day, you know, let's say you're only eating animal products at two meals versus, you know, three meals and, and snacks, then your body will help you. And there's, there's two schools of thought here, and they're always butting heads. Brian found a documentary, I don't know what it's called. I will actually let you guys know because I want to go back and watch it. Um, I've only seen the beginning part, but they present one dramatic side and the other dramatic side. And I'm assuming they pull it all together somehow. There are an equal amount of scientific tests out there that say we need to eat vegan versus we need animal protein. Personally, I think the way that it is, is listening to your body. Some of us will do wonderfully on a vegan diet. We can fuel ourselves on all plant-based sources, all of them, no animal products whatsoever. But then there's some of us that can't, you know, animal products really, if you, if you, if you really want the nitty gritty on the animal products, the animal eats the greenery, right? So let's say beef. If you do not want to know where beef comes from, stop this video right now. All right, so cows go, they eat the dirt, they eat the grass, they eat the hay, they eat the things in the, in the field, right? They get slaughtered, they come, they end up a steak on your plate. Everything that that cow ate went into making his muscle or his or her muscle strong to create the steak. So now instead of you having to go out and eat all of those fruits and vegetables and the, you know, the vegetation that that animal ate, you're getting it in more of a concentrated form in the meat that's on the plate. Eggs are very similar. Um, the thing with eggs is it's such a concentrated collection of protein and nutrients because ultimately an egg is something that develops into a little baby chick or a baby duck or whatever, right? 
Mother Nature wanted to fuel said feet as well. And for those of you who are trying to go more plant-based, this is where understanding what the animals are actually eating to help you fuel your diet and fill in the gaps that you're now not getting from the proteins, the animal products that you were eating before, that's where this comes into play. I do not like thinking about where things come from. I don't. Um, I'm okay talking about cows because I don't eat red meat very often. <sighs> Please don't tell me about pigs. <laughs> I did not eat bacon for 10 years, so don't, don't, we're, we're not talking pigs, but you know, cows we can talk about. So now, if you cut out the crap and you look at your animal proteins and you minimize those so that you're only eating what you absolutely need, now you've got a diet that is really an anti-inflammatory diet for your body. Another, another thing you need to look at and ensure you know everything about, especially, oh my gosh, you guys, especially if you know that you're trying to figure out what's going on, what's happening, why you're sick, why you're eating and you're not able to, to eat something without getting sick. You know, if you know this is an issue, and your doctor still hasn't, oh, that, there we go, hasn't figured out what's happening, we need to clear that pathway for them. You need to do your work. Young Van Zandt always says, you need to do the work. You have work just like your doctors have work. You are responsible for your health and your well-being. Yes, we have probably put ourselves through hell up to this point, um, but that doesn't mean you can't turn it around. I had a 70 year old client that went and climbed Mount Bunnell. Or no, not Mount Bunnell. Half Dome. She climbed it every year from 70 to 75. I think she's still alive. I don't know if she's still climbing it because I'm not in touch. But five years, you guys. And she had never touched the weight in her life. She had never dieted in her life. She had never thought about what she ate or exercised or anything. She knew she was a healthy weight. She didn't realize she wasn't a healthy body. And at 70 years old, she shifted everything around and she changed the rest of her life. It's never too late to take a chance at improving your health. So you have to do the work, just like your doctor, okay? If they're gonna give you 100%, you have to give them 110. Cause someone's gotta make sure that your, your health is priority. And the only person that's going to do that is you. So when you look at anti-inflammatory, and the reason I kind of went off on that rant is, yeah, you need to look at what your body actually needs micronutrient-wise, but for a true anti-inflammatory diet that is specialized to you, you need to understand the way that your body is responding to foods. If you're understanding that, you know, you're getting sick a lot, like this winter, I'm getting sick a lot. I am. Um, the boys are in school. I swear, they bring something home and it's like, it hits me. And I always think I'm fighting it, but I, you know, I was talking to a couple of teachers and they're like, yeah, give it a year and a half and your, your immune system will be top notch. So we're six months in. We're good. Yay, I'm proud of you. It's, it's, it's not easy. Um, so when you look at your sensitivities, if you're feeling like you're getting sick a lot or you're feeling like you're run down and you're fatigued, but you don't think that there's enough of an issue to go to the doctor, you don't have to go to the doctor. I mean, that, that's, that's a personal choice. That's you taking care of you. If your symptoms are severe enough, yes, I recommend going to the doctor. If you know something's up, but you don't really know what, there are two ways you can figure out how to reduce inflammation within your diet, okay? One is to track what you're eating and track symptoms, okay? So you eat, mark your symptoms. How did you feel an hour later? Were you happy? Were you tired? Did you feel like you could take on the world or did you feel like you wanted to crawl into bed and, and curl up with the dog? Did you feel nauseous? Um, were you lightheaded? after a certain time period, any of those things. 
How are you sleeping? Right? You can track all of that. Or you can go through and you can do a lab test. There's Check My Body Health. There's Everly Well. Um, a lot of doctors offer them as well. I will include those two links below. Those are my two favorites. Um, Check My Body Health. Their top one, it tests 900 different potential sensitivities, including environmental and heavy metals and processed ingredients. You want to find out what's in the chicken nuggets? Remember me mentioning those? Now, this is something, diet is something that we talk about a lot, right? Figuring out your sensitivities, um, taking things out, bringing them back in so that you understand how your body sends you a signal to say, hey, too much. That's what you're doing when you're, when you're testing and when you're figuring out what's going on, what's impacting your diet and what's not, or what's impacting your health and what's not from your diet. Because the impact is a trigger of inflammation. Now, when inflammation is triggered, just a reminder, inflammation is triggered, two things are released, adrenaline and cortisol. Remember? Adrenaline, too much, impacts your heart. Cortisol, stomach, right? Builds up, builds up, builds up. Triggers chronic stress. It's the cycle. We need to break the cycle. Now with heart, there's another crucial element of lifestyle that is, is imperative here, you guys. Exercise. And this is where the unique philosophy comes in. And hold on, let me, I want to make sure I'm not. Okay, we're good. I, I, I could talk about this forever. Um, okay, so with exercise, here's the unique philosophy. So let's say you're fighting fibrosis or fibrosis, lupus, something that is a painful condition. Rheumatoid arthritis, osteoporosis, anything like that, right? Or you are dealing with a situation where chronic stress has been identified and you are now trying to manage your stress, but you haven't exercised in the past. Now, automatically what comes to mind, go to a boot camp class, start running, riding a bike, swim, right? Those are, those are pretty typical answers, right? Those are things I hear often. Here's a unique thought for you. Yoga, Tai Chi, Qigong, and here's why. There are several types of movement in physical exercise and physical activity. Dynamic, isometric, and static. Okay? Dynamic are quick movement. So, you know, bicep curl, right? This is a dynamic movement. Curl, hold the muscle. This can either be static or asymmetric. Depends on how long you hold it. The difference is how hard your heart is working and how hard your body is working. If you're fighting a condition that is painful, especially, especially those of you with autoimmune conditions that are painful. RA fibro, I'm talking right to you. CFS, you know I'm talking to you. When you are fighting these conditions, you need to start slow. That means five minutes. Five minutes. I don't care if you're walking. I don't care if you're dancing with the kids. Um, a little bit of yoga. And I know some of you are going to look at, at this video and go, I can't do a downward dog. That means putting my whole body on the ground. And do it. Who says you have to do it on the ground? Modify. Everything that you do when you're starting from a place of pain is going to have to be modified. You're not trying to trigger more pain. You're trying to relieve the pain by building up your body's resources. But unlike someone who is not fighting a painful condition, who doesn't have to worry about inflammation being triggered because they walked a little too far or lifted a weight a little that was a little too heavy, you know, push themselves just, just Someone that doesn't have to deal with that, they can go and say, oh, you know what? I need to live a healthier lifestyle. Let me pop into this boot camp five days a week. Go running. Let's add running to it. We're not all capable of doing that. 
And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that because nine times out of 10, the people that aren't capable of doing that and the people that need to kind of take a step back and take it a little bit slower actually are able to sustain that level of activity, the higher level of activity, long term because they took a very slow, determined, consistent time. They, they were consistent, they were diligent, Every day they did a little bit of something and the purpose wasn't to build my muscles up. It wasn't to fit in a pair of jeans, which sometimes that is what motivates you. The ultimate goal was to get healthier so that when you live life, you live, you feel like you're living life. You, you don't live in fear. You don't, um, worry about various health conditions. You don't worry about your heart. You know, and it, you don't worry about that because you're taking care of yourself. Because you're now doing those things that will help you live a life where you're active. You don't feel like you're in pain all the time. You don't feel like you're just trudging through life. You're now living life. With exercise in our heart, cardiovascular exercise, right? Cardio. Cardiorespiratory exercise. Cardio is not to lose weight, you guys. If you want to lose weight, you need resistance training. Yoga, Tai Chi, Qigong, you don't think they're resistance. They are. They use your body weight. You do not need physical objects to, to do any workout. And if you don't believe me, call me. We will get on a Zoom call and I will show you how you can work out using your body. I did it for a very long time with my clients. And uh, all of them are still doing it. So there's something to be said for it. Now, with cardio exercise, what cardio does is it actually exercises your circulatory system. It exercises your nervous system. It helps your body create a healthy flow of blood and oxygen. That's what cardio is for. It's for your lungs. It's for your heart. It's for your veins. It's for your, all your, your blood vessels. For your brain. Get that blood flow. It's for your lymphatic system. Because if your muscles aren't moving, your lymphatic system is not moving. So if you're worried about anything related to your heart, if you have any sort of genetic predispositions, if you have anything that is autoimmune related, even if your autoimmune condition is not one that targets the heart, you are still highly susceptible for some sort of a heart attack or a stroke. So it is important that while you look at your diet, you also look at exercise and activity and make sure that that activity has a level of cardio alongside it. It needs to be 50-50, strength and cardio. I am not saying you need to go out and work out for three hours. Half an hour. That's all you need. Half an hour. Okay? Now, with that half an hour, you can do two things at once. Over time, remember I was talking about if you're just getting started and you're dealing with a painful condition, to make sure that what you do is... Um, Sorry. Do you love when your nose starts running right in the middle of the talk? Gotta love it. All right, so when I was talking about that five minutes, that five minutes over time will become half an hour. If you have the time to make it a full hour eventually, that's phenomenal. Because that means you can do a half an hour of cardio and a half an hour of some sort of a resistance. If you're dealing with any sort of painful condition, I highly recommend any of the yoga, the Tai Chi, the Qigong, um, slow moving, determined activity that uses body weight. Once body weight becomes boring to you, then resistance bands. The, the physical weights aren't gonna be bad, but it's just, you know, with resistance bands and with aqua exercise, 
You have resistance coming in, you have resistance coming back, right? So in the contraction and the extension, there's resistance both ways. What you are seeking is balance and equality, okay? With painful conditions, when you have an exercise where you're only doing a contraction, the extension really isn't getting much, you have opposing muscles, right? Opposing muscles, contraction, and your extension uses your tricep, but not so much, right? When you have a resistance band, they both use the same amount of resistance. That balance actually does help your body improve itself. It helps restore and rebuild muscles. Now, I know I'm kind of harping on the exercise. There's one thing I need to make sure to mention. And this is to all the women in the audience because nine times out of 10, it is us that is at fault. Science has proven, and if you need me to go find all the tests, I will. Um, science has proven that women start to repair their muscle structure the minute our bodies think that exercise is over. When I'm done exercising, I take three deep breaths. Two, three, done. From this point, I need protein, carb, as soon as possible. Because our body starts repairing within that first half hour. So if you do not put something in your body that's about 100 calories, you really don't need a lot. Just make sure you have a good solid protein and some sort of carbohydrate to fuel digestion, metabolization, and res restoration and refueling. Your body needs to know that it's getting not only the fuel source, but it's also getting the micronutrients to help push said fuel source through your body. Protein, carbs. Okay? You only need about 100 calories. You don't need a lot. Brian got us these uh, Lenny and Larry's cookies. I actually like these. Um, and y'all know I'm not, I'm not a big eat a protein bar, eat a protein shake. Da -da -da. I'm not, I'm not really big into that. I like using those for when you have nothing else, right? You need something quick. This cookie, and you can see I've been munching on mine, like, it's huge. There's your 100 calories. So if you have to have some sort of a cookie or a bar or a shake or something ready that you just grab, Drink, eat, whatever. You do whatever you have to do. A little thing of yogurt, perfect. And now those little things of yogurt actually come in drinkable forms. So we have now reached a point in society where there are zero excuses. Zero. So I'm going to circle this back to look at our main topic, and that's heart health. And one of the things that hopefully you guys are kind of noticing across all of these is, you know, people talk about inflammation as though it's this horrible thing. And it doesn't need to be. It's actually there to help our body, to help us heal. So if we can understand it, understand what helps it work, then we can actually help our body not only heal itself, but maintain it's help, you know, help prevent a potential heart attack at a young age, prevent um, strokes at a young age. And the more we talk about it, the more we share, the more we all know. And the more we know, the easier it is. Because if the knowledge is in our subconscious, then our conscious no longer needs to tell our subconscious what to do. Health becomes work when we have to do something to retrain our brain, right? Once we do that, it should be easy. It should just be our brain going, oh, hey, by the way, tap, tap, tap. We need this, this, and this. Can, can you help us out here? It should be that easy. 
Exercise is exactly like eating a healthier diet. You get three to four weeks in and your brain starts going, oh wait, we're doing this thing now. We like this thing. This thing makes us feel better. So let's do this more often. It shifts it around. So exercise, a lot of times people will start and about seven to 10 days in, they kind of stop because they're looking at it going, well, I'm not progressing. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. Blah, blah, blah. It's not about that. Exercise is something you're going to have to do for the rest of your life. I don't care if your exercise is dancing. Don't care. Play with your kids. Exercise is just activity that taxes your body in one way or the other. Cardiovascular, it taxes, you know, it helps work your lungs, it helps work your, your circulatory system, it gets things flowing and moving, right? Resistance, strengthens your muscles, um, it includes static stretching, dynamic stretching, things that will stretch your muscles out so that it relieves knots, right? Our muscles are Z-fibers. So every time you work and you do something resistance, you create little, tiny little tears. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. We're not talking torn muscle. Tiny, tiny little tears. And each time those tiny tears happen, your body heals it tighter. Got it? That's how you become thinner, fitter, and ultimately, that's why your muscles feel stronger and have definition. Because over time, they get tighter and tighter and tighter because they're becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. And once they reach the point where they can't tighten up anymore, then they start expanding. But that expansion isn't inflammation. The expansion is actually just fibers becoming stronger. And women, we do not bulk up. I'm sorry. You need an excessive amount of testosterone to bulk up. So unless you are adding testosterone into your diet, not going to happen. Now, <clears throat> this message is definitely for the women. We are at risk of a lot of things because we take care of everybody else before we take care of ourselves. And I get it, especially like with the boys. It's very hard. And, and like when they were little, little, it was very hard to look at them and say, but I need to take care of you. You know, let me take care of you and then I'll do this for me. And I, you know, it, it'll be, I'll know you're taking care of because nobody's taking care of you but me. If you're taking care of, you know, a parent or a sibling or, you know, your caregiver of any kind, it's very easy for us to fall into, let me do this for you. And then I know it's not easy, but a lot of times the and then needs to move. It needs to flip. You need to eat. You need to eat well. You need to exercise. When the boys were babies, there's no way, there's no way I would have gone and been able to do an hour of, of workout or even half an hour of workout. I tried and I just, oh, it was too much. But dancing with them, using them as weights, like to this day, if you walk in the playroom and we're playing, I can't lay down on the ground because I have two babies on my hips wanting to do bridges or they sit down on my feet because they want to do reverse crunches or chest presses. <laughs> They're 25 pounds each now. So there is always an alternative. There's always a creative way to take care of you as you need to take care of whomever. But if you put yourself second, then at some point you, you risk losing yourself and leaving them without somebody to take care of them. And I don't, I don't like the idea of putting that in someone's head, but if you don't take care of you, there's no you to take care of anybody else. Um, 
I, I, you know, I hate, oh my gosh, I hate leaving it on that note, but it really is that simple. Drink your water. Look at, look at what you're eating. Look at how you're eating. Look at your exercise. Is there something you could do today? Some small change. Don't make this monumental. Make it small. Small little changes. Is there something you could do today that could help reduce your inflammation, could help your heart, improve the health of your heart, improve the health of, of your body overall. Maybe you, you meditate for a few minutes today, relieve a little stress. It's your life. <sighs> Go do it. All right, so let's end on a happy note, shall we? Because it's been a rough, rough weekend. Um, all right. So cart is open for all three programs. The six month is open. The six week is open and the monthly membership. We are going to have a nice little party with a little bit of, of tutorial stuff. Um, something that I've been asked about for a very long time. We're going to go into the kitchen, you guys. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about replacements. We're gonna talk about how to make certain things without Yay! Green smoothies! Love it! We're gonna talk about how to replace ingredients easily and do so in a way that feels like nothing. Feels like nothing. Okay. You guys have been asking me for this, you've been asking for things that we can do that are quick and easy. You know, how do I eat when I don't have time to prep food? So that's what we're going to do. The 15th, 12 o'clock, I will be coming through to the group by Zoom. So it will be up on live for replay. Um, if you know somebody who is not on Facebook who wants to join us, I'm more than welcome to join me in the Zoom. Um, I am considering also creating it live on, you know, having it go live on YouTube, but that kind of depends. I don't know if I have access to do that yet. Um, and the biggest reason why on the 15th is because you, you can get into the programs now. However, start dates are not till March 1st. And bonuses, things like that will not be uploaded and accessible until the 15th. There's a couple of goodies that I'm giving to everybody, especially within this group. So there's there's discounts um, for signing up early. In addition, with the monthly membership, you're going to get two appointments because I want to make sure you start off on the right foot, make sure you're in the right place. Here's the difference between the three. If you are in a place where you know what's going on, you know what you need to do, but you are just not sticking with it for whatever reason, that's when that monthly membership is helpful. Each month is tailored to the people within the group, okay? If there's something that you're specifically working on that you need to address, that's where we'll address it. You don't need to do a lot of the deep digging because you've already done them, right? You, you know what you're dealing with. With the six week, you know what's going on, but you have to kickstart, you gotta get into it. Okay, that is your start. If you are in a place where you're starting from scratch or you've hit a wall, you don't know where else you're going to go, you've got to do the deep dive, that's where the six-month program comes into play. There's a lot of people in this group who aren't there. You're either going to be a six-week or you're going to be a monthly. And there's actually a lot of you in here that don't need either, which is fabulous. I love that you have reached this point. Uh, but they're there and they're available. And we're going to kickstart everything off on February 15th. So February 15th, 12 o'clock, you will see that pop up later. Um, and it's not going to say Monday Live because it's a whole different ballgame. We're going to interact. We're gonna, I'll throw some, some things in there, but we're going to be in the kitchen so we can do a little cooking, uh, a little swap of ingredients, things like that. We're, we're going to have a little fun. A little bit different from our monthly lives. So, good.
Go be healthy, you guys. I hope everything that I shared today was informative. Um, Monday Live from this from last week will be up in a couple of hours. I wanted to make sure that it played through okay because of all the, the technical issues. Um, and it took a minute to get it downloaded to my computer. So, I will chat with y'all later. Thank you for watching. Bye, Robin. We need a, we need lunch or happy hour or something. <laughs> Gotta get everyone healthy first and get over the, uh, the school COVID bullshit. So, soon. I will chat with you guys later. Go be healthy. Bye.